Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am back from my Norway adventures and super excited to be sharing with you projects from the Countryside Inn Suite. Now, this suite is one that if you love blues, you are going to love this suite. But I also am going to show you how fabulous this blue and white DSP works with um, some colors to add a little bit of a, a twist on it. So we're going to make three projects today. Today. I'm going to show you all the products in the suite and um, then I'm going to show you a bunch of other um, ideas after I'm done demonstrating my three projects. But I should mention all three projects today are fun folds. Um, I thought let's just go big and have some fun with this suite. So um, I'm excited to share these projects with you. I am happy to be home. Um, it was a wonderful trip. We had uh, such a great time. It was just so good. John and I have not been away alone together <laughs> since our honeymoon. Um, I I mean, we did like an overnight here and there, but we haven't like actually taken a trip, just the two of us. So uh, that's 19 years. <laughs> so it's been a while. Uh, and I think we were due. So we had um, just a great time away. And uh, Norway is just the most stunningly beautiful country. Um, that's if somebody asked me, what's the highlight? And I would just say like the scenery, it's just so beautiful there. And uh, it was chilly at times. Uh, we had some sun on in some, when we were down sort of some of the, the southern um, um, stops, but as we got up north, um, it was chilly and windy, and certainly uh, felt like we were up north. Um, and the really cool thing was that it didn't get dark; like it never really got dark. Dark. Um, I took a photo off of the balcony of our stateroom on the ship at 11:27 p.m., and it still was like dusk. It wasn't even dark. <laughs> So yeah, it was just a, a really cool experience. We had a great time. Um, thanks to all who followed along with my adventures um, with the photos that I posted. I appreciated your comments um, and I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the beautiful country of Norway. So we're back. I'm a little jet lagged. Um, I was back to work today. <laughs> And I said to my my son when I came home, you know, I was away for a week and a half and it feels like I never left because it doesn't take long to get back into the, the stress of uh, teaching high school these days. But anyway, enough about that. I'm going to pull up my video here so I can see who is joining me. And then we're going to get some stamping. Oh, I also have to tell you about some new promotions that are coming. So let me just see. Come on, my iPad is extra slow today. All right, we've got Jill. Hi, Jill. Thank you for the welcome home. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Linda. Hi, Laura. Thanks for the welcome home. It is good to be home. Um, all right, so June is coming. We're only, what, two days out? Today's the 30th. Um, so a couple of things that I want to make sure you're aware of. We have a DSP sale coming. Yay! So there is going to be 15% off um, several packages of DSP from the annual catalog. Um, there is a flyer. I will um, be posting the link to that as part of my newsletter on June 1st so you can see exactly which DSPs are on sale. Um, happens to be that the Countryside Inn DSP that I'm going to be featuring today will be on sale. Bonus! Uh, and you're going to be seeing a lot of DSP projects from me this month. Now, I tend to use DSP a lot anyway. Uh, because I love it. I love pretty paper and our DSP is the best, but um, I am going to highlight some of the fantastic packs that are going to be on sale during this DSP sale this month. So from June 1st to June 30th, 15% uh, off select packs of DSP from the annual catalog. The other exciting promotion that's starting June 1st, there is a starter kit promotion. So it's a joint offer. Uh, it's sweetening the starter kit pot. So normally in the starter kit, you get to choose 165 dollars worth of product uh, for $135 for, shipped for free and in most provinces here in Canada tax-free. Well during this promotion that's already a great deal don't get me wrong it's the best deal in the catalog however during this promotion the deal gets even better because instead of $165 worth of product you get to choose $206 worth of product to put in your starter kit for just $135 so it is an amazing deal and what's even better is that you can put that DSP that's on sale in your starter kit as part of your building your kit. So really super offers coming up this month, uh, next month in June uh, from Stampin' Up. So I want to take a sec and tell you about those before we get to Stampin'. All right. Okay. Let me flip my camera and we are going to get to it here. There we go. 
we'll do the old flipperoo. Okay, uh, my light's in the way today. Let's see if we can do something about that. Just adjust that out of the way. There we go. Now, can we see that? That's not quite centered. There we go. That's better. Okay. Hi, Jean. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed my photos. Yes, we enjoyed being on the trip. It was just, uh, it was certainly a trip that we would never, ever be able to do on our own. So it was uh, an extra bonus. Um, yeah. Hi, Margie. Hi, Pam. All right. So let's have a look at the beautiful Countryside Inn Suite. It's on page 62 and 63 in the annual catalog. Now you're going to see, um, when you first look at this suite, you kind of go, okay, pretty paper, embossing folder, stamp, dies. Huh. Well, there's no images or sentiments in this suite. Well, that's because you kind of have to turn the page. So when you turn over to page 64, you will see this Lasting Joy stamp set, which actually coordinates with the patterns in this DSP. Okay, now I need to mention this is not an official part of the suite, but it is designed to work with the suite. Okay, so what you will find uh, if you decide to order the uh, suite collection, you will get the DSP, the bundle, and the embossing folder. You will not get the Lasting Joy stamp set. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that there is a coordinating stamp set with images and sentiments. I'm going to be using it a ton today um, that works with the patterns in this DSP. Okay, all right, I'm just looking at this. It looks really dark in here. I don't know why. I've got all my lights on. I'm just looking at the video and it looks very dark. Let's see if we can Is that up all the way. Yep. All right. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm used to that midnight sun or just the sun today. It certainly is bright. All right, let's get this out of the way. I'm going to show you the products and then we are going to get to it. So here, let me just talk about this stamp set. So this is the Last Enjoy stamp set that I just mentioned. Not an official part of the suite, but is designed to work with the suite. And it gives you your sentiments and images, okay? What is included in the suite is this bundle. So we have the Countryside Corner stamp. This is a large background stamp. And I have this in here for a reason. I'm going to show you something in a couple minutes. Um, but it's a large background stamp. Now, I have seen some people carving this up with an X-Acto knife. You certainly could do that if you wanted to. One of the challenges that I find when you have narrow strips of rubber like that, this is that it can be a challenge to get them to mount straight so that they coordinate with your dies. What I have done, and believe me, I, I am not one who hesitates to cut up stamps. If you've been around for a while, you've probably seen me um, with chopped up stamps. But what I do with this die, or this stamp, is let's say I just want this outer border, this outside image. I just die cut from post-it note, the next size label down. I lay it down over the inside part of the stamp that I don't want. Ink, I ink up the image I want, take off my mask, and then stamp. And I'll only get that outside image, okay? So you can do the same thing with any of these. Um, if you want, let's say you want this little guy in here, but you don't want the rest. Well, you can take a large piece of um, a post-it note or even just copy paper and cut using the neck size up, which would be this die, okay? So you're going to cut, nope, I lied. You're going to cut this die, <laughs> place your mask over top, and then you will only get that little image. Okay. So you can mask off the rest of the stamp, the parts of the stamp that you don't want. All right. It's not hard to do. Um, you just cut the, di cut different masks and place them depending on which piece you want. Okay. All right. So that is the countryside corner stamp set and dies. These are available in a bundle, but you cannot bundle these two. Okay. So if you only want the dies, and the stamp set, they cannot be bundled. They're not a discounted um, product, okay? They have to be purchased separately. But these two are available in a bundle. I hope that makes sense. Did I mention I'm a little debt less? <laughs> All right, next up we have this beautiful embossing folder. It's called Countryside Blossoms. You're going to see this one in action as well. Um, and I'm going to highlight one of the features of this in a second. But it's a beautiful um, sort of country kind of folksy brocade pattern. Really, really pretty. And then, of course, we have this stunning DSP in all the shades of blue. Um, so we have this beautiful floral. We've got these adorable little bunnies. We're going to use this one on the first card we're going to make. We've got some birds. We've got foxes. 
We've got a forest for the foxes to frolic in. And then we have this pretty brocade. And if that looks familiar, it's because it actually coordinates with the embossing folder. In fact, you can line up. I'm not sure if this will work. Oh, yes, it will. You can line up. I don't know if this will be visible on the camera, but I can line up the, the pattern in the embossing folder with the pattern on the DSP. And I'm, in fact, I'll show you a card at the end where I've done that and embossed the DSP. It just looks so cool. So that's a nifty little feature. Often we have dies that coordinate with the DSP. This time we have an embossing folder. So a little bit of a twist. Now let me flip this paper over because on the back side we have some beautiful um, patterns again in the blues, but a little bit more subtle. So we've got a stripe. These are little bitty tulips, but it's just a really pretty pattern. Um, this is a little bit of a plaid with a bit of a floral twist. We've got a navy stripe. We've got a balmy blue stripe. And then we've got, um, this one's a little bit more uh, feminine. So this is kind of a masculine pinstripe. This is a little bit more feminine, uh, but it's really pretty. And these coordinate so well with the patterns on the other side, right? You can mix and match. Um, so these create a really nice um, sort of counter pattern or counterbalance to what you are using on the front, the busier patterns. So really pretty paper. And again, on sale, 15% off starting June 1st. All right, let's get to some stamping. Enough talking. Uh, oh, hi, Pam. Hi, Tracy. Okay, yes, I did have a great time. It's nice to be missed, though. <laughs> All right, so the first card we're going to make, I these little bunnies reminded me of Peter Rabbit and Peter Rabbit storybooks, and they're about this size, the ones that I had when I was a kid. Um, so I made a cute little book fold. Um, easy, super simple. All of the fun folds I'm doing today are quite simple. Um, and work really well for any level of crafter. So this one, we're going to put this one together. Um, I wanted to highlight that adorable bunny pattern. So to start, we have a piece of thick basic white cardstock. You can certainly use regular basic white. I just like the extra uh, weight of the thick. It's five and a half by eight and a half. And then I've scored it. Let me turn it this way. I scored it at three and a quarter and four and a quarter. Okay. So I've got this inch sort of mid, mid piece here, which is going to form our spine. All right. So I'm going to start by just folding my cardstock in half, just like it was a regular card. And we'll give it a good old burnish with our bone folder. There we go. Okay. Now I have that extra little score line here. I'm going to fold this back just like it's a book because well, it's supposed to look like a book. So there we go. So that gives us our fold. Okay, now we are going to do some layering because you know I love my layers. So to start, we're going to start with the spine piece, this narrow piece here. So the width of this is one inch. So my DSP is cut to three quarters and then I added a mat that is seven eighths wide. Okay, so this is three quarters by five and a quarter. This is seven eighths by five and three eighths. And again, all of these measurements I will add to the video description afterwards. So you can copy these cards, you can remake them, you can case them, you can do whatever you like. Um, one stop shop, so you don't have to search around and go to different websites to find the, the measurements. So it's all there for you, or it will be. <laughs> when I'm done, I usually get that up after I eat my dinner, because Tuesdays are takeout nights, takeout Tuesday, it's my favorite night of the week. Because <laughs> I gotta say, it was a little bit of a shock to come home and have to make my own bed and have to actually think about what we were going to eat for dinner because <laughs> for a whole week, I, somebody else did that for me. It was lovely. So we're going to go ahead and layer this little piece here on our the spine of our card. So that's going to go on there just like that. Okay. And then we have our adorable bunny pattern. So this is cut to three by five and a quarter. And then my mat, this is balmy blue, not balmy blue, boho blue cardstock. It is three and one eighth by five and three eighths. So again, we're going to mat that. And center it on our boho blue. I gotta say I'm loving this blue, this in color boho blue. So pretty. And let me say, this was a very popular paper um, for the swaps that I that uh, everybody shared on the trip. Lots and lots of countryside in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add this panel to the front of our card. 
And I always like to just kind of eyeball it and make sure my edges line up. So it's all nice and square and neat and tidy. Okay. Now I just realized I forgot to add my twine, but that's okay. We're going to forego this little bit of twine here. We'll just add a bow this time. That's okay. <laughs> Did I mention I'm jet lagged? I'm going to use that excuse for a week. <laughs> all right. We're going to go ahead and glue our spine shut. So I'm going to add just a little bit of glue here. And close my card and burnish it well. Now I always like to fold it back and burnish this fold as well because I find if you don't do that, the card can be hard to open to write in. Okay, so you want to bend that back and just make sure it's going to open nicely. Okay, now to decorate, I have one of the many frames that you can cut using the Countryside Corners stamp set and the coordinating dies. So this is, let me just pull in the stamp set, stamp case here. It's this sort of third largest um, die, or sorry, um, image. So what I did is I just inked this whole thing up in boho blue stamped it on some white cardstock and then I just took and I cut frames out of all with all of the dies so that gave me a whole bunch of frames to play around with which is fun when you're designing so this is going to get adhered centered on our card and look at how sweet that little bunny is centered right there I'm going to try not to cover him up because he's too cute so we're going to go ahead and add this onto our card if my glue wants to work come on the glue's been on vacation too. I was having a hard time getting fired back up. There we go. So we're going to take and center this on our panel here and get our little bunny centered. I think this is just so cute. I think this is making an adorable baby card or even a first birthday card. Um, so sweet. All right. Now, this is, again, same idea. This is the smallest um, image. So this one, I stamped and heat embossed the entire image in white on navy cardstock. And again, just cut out all my frames. You're going to see another one of these on another card in a little bit. So that is going to go on here. And I'm actually going to put this a little bit lower than I did on my sample because I want this little bunny to be peeking out because he's just too cute. Um, so before we do that, we are going to stamp this little teeny tiny banner. Yes, it is a die. I didn't actually hand cut that. It's right there. And the for you stamp from the lasting joy stamp set fits quite nicely in there. And I have to find it because I've got all my stamps in one basket today because I'm in the middle of ribbon and product share prep trying to get them all out the door so every basket that I have is uh pressed into service when I'm in that mode so I'm going to ink up my for you and I'm going to stamp it now I'm going to have to pull this down closer I'm sorry if this is out of range for you guys to see but the only chance I have to actually get this centered is if I move it really close to myself because there's not a lot of margin room for error here so I'm going to stamp this a little bit to the left there I'll move it in so you can see there it is. Um, and that leaves me room to add my adorable little bunny. So we're going to go ahead and stick this down first on our label. So again, a little smidge of glue. Oh, Laura, you're liking this more than you thought you would. That's, that's good to hear. I was one, again, I love the DSP, but I kind of thought, oh, I don't know. Don't know if I need it. Well, of course, you know how that goes. You start playing with these things and suddenly you can't even imagine how you could have considered not ordering it because they're so great. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add um, a dimensional just to the, the back of my bunny here. I might do two actually. Put one down here as well. And he's going to get popped onto our label. Look at how cute he is. So sweet. And then this is going to get popped up on the front of our card. So we're going to um, offset it a little bit. On my sample, it was fairly centered, but I don't want to cover up that little sweetie back there. So I'm going to add a couple more dimensionals. Yes, I'm double popping. And yes, I know it makes the card really thick. But, you know, that's just how I roll. <laughs> so uh, you certainly could glue this flat if you're worried about um, extra postage. But for me, I am good with it. All right. And then we're going to add a little bow. So on my sample, I'll show you, I did add some twine, but honestly, it's hardly even noticeable. So let's just pretend that twine isn't there and we're just going to tie us a cute little bow here. 
just with some white baker's twine this is like the swiss army knife this and linen thread um, are the swiss army knife of ribbons and twines because they work with just about everything i use these a lot so we'll trim that off and we're gonna just add that just onto the corner of our um, little tag there so i'm gonna grab my take your pick i have a fresh roll of glue dots so they're quite teeny weeny do you find do you notice that when you get to start a new roll the dots are smaller <laughs> that's because they aren't squished as flat so as they um, roll the dots onto the roll the, the glue gets squished and it spreads out which is why your glue dots that are on the inside of the roll are bigger than the ones that are on the outside of the roll that's my little words of wisdom from Lena today. <laughs> all right there we go so we'll give this a little bit of a trim because my tails are a bit on the long side there we go. Isn't that sweet? And then I have some new embellishments. These are the Tinsel Gems 3-pack. They also come in a 4-pack. There are all sorts of new embellishments in this catalog. And we have these, I don't know, I don't know that they're officially navy or misty moonlight. Um, regardless, they work really nicely with the blues in this DSP. So we're just going to add a couple of these little fellas here. Whoops. Come here, you. Uh, I don't want to, here, we'll put this up a little higher. So the bunny's looking at it. There he is. Isn't that cute? Now on the inside of my sample, I did add a birthday sentiment and another little fussy cut bunny. Okay. And yes, I did. Um, I did fussy cut my bunny and I didn't actually ink the edges, Jean. It's actually just cut. Um, what you see along the edges is actually the DSP. It's just the, the, the neat, the, what is it? Boho blue in the background. Um, so I just cut him right out of the DSP and, uh, glued him on nothing fancy, just some easy peasy fussy cutting. All right. So there we go. That is number one, quick and easy fun fold. Set that aside and we're gonna move on to number two. So number two is this one I posted earlier today. This is inspired by a fun fold that I received on the incentive trip. So I'll just bring in that. This was a um, swap that I received and you can see very similar, but I wanted to use the label dies. So I modified it a little bit and simplified it and I wanted to add that little pop of yellow because I love blue and yellow together. So this is what I did. So I'm going to show you how to create this piece. Um, just give you a couple of tips because, well, I did it wrong the first time. <laughs> so I'm going to try and save you wasting some cardstock. All right, so let's get to it. Let me pull in. We'll start with our card base. Okay, so this is a piece of lemon lolly cardstock. It is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So it's just a regular card base. And then I'm gonna bring in my trimmer. And what I'm going to do, so I've got my card um, um, landscape, and I'm going, to, I've got my, my score line in the middle. Okay, let me fold that so you can actually see it a little better. It's hard to see score lines on the camera if they haven't been burnished. Okay, so now you can see that fold a little bit more easily. So what I'm going to do is open up my trimmer and I'm going to take, line up the top of my cardstock where the score line is with the bottom corner. So I'm gonna cut on a diagonal from that score line down to the bottom right corner. All right, now really important, when you are starting, you do not wanna start at the corner because if you start with your blade down here and you move up, you're probably going to bend your corner, all right? So there are two ways to do it. The easiest is to start up above and come down from the edge that way. You can also start in the middle and go either direction. That also works. Now I just noticed that's not quite where I want it. So here we go. Let's go right down or cut right down. And that gives us our angled card front. Okay, this you can save for something else. So we'll get that out of the way. Easiest fun fold ever, literally. It's just a card base with one extra diagonal slice. Now you do want to burnish this really well. And in fact, I'm actually going to do it both ways. So if you find when you make fun folds that your cards aren't lying flat, you see how that still wants to pop up? You just really need to burnish. So you're going to do the front, you're going to burnish the back, okay? And then you probably are going to want to open it and burnish it the other way as well. 
and that will give you a card that's going to lie a little bit flatter. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's our base. We are going to add a piece of this pretty DSP. Now, let me explain. This started out as a four by five and a quarter inch piece of DSP. Okay, so four by five and a quarter. And then I did the same thing that I did on my card base. So I, I cut from the top left to the bottom right corner on the diagonal. And this is where it's really important to start your blade in the middle and go up and then down. Do not try and come at those corners from the top or the bottom because you will bend the corners of your DSP. Okay, that's a really important thing when you're cutting on the diagonal. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this onto our card base. Oh, I almost forgot, before I do that, we're gonna add a little bit of yellow to the pattern on the DSP because I wanted it to coordinate with my card base. So I've got my light lemon lolly. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. Light Lemon Lolly um, Stampin' Blends, and I'm just going to take the bullet tip and I'm just going to color in the centers of these little bitty flowers with my Lemon Lolly Blends. And that is just going to pull in ever so slightly a little bit of that yellow so that it looks like my DSP was made to coordinate with it. There we go, done, really quick and easy. But it's going to just make it coordinate a little bit better with my card base. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue this on. Yes, I agree, Jean, I am loving Lemon Lolly. I also love saying it, Lemon Lolly. Um, you have to say it with a British accent. <laughs> we spent um, a day before the trip and a day after the trip in the UK. Uh, we spent the day before in London, and then uh, the day we actually flew home, uh, we spent the morning in Windsor and toured Windsor Castle, which was super cool, but very, very busy. Oh my goodness, it was a bank holiday in the UK and lots and lots and lots of people. So it was uh, a little crowded, but that's okay. We still got to see where the royals live. Um, and how did I get on that? Oh, lemon lolly sounds better with an accent, in my opinion. All right, so then... Our background piece here is a piece of basic white cardstock. It is four by five and a quarter inches, and I have embossed it using the Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. And again, it coordinates with the DSP, so it just creates a nice neutral backdrop um, that matches the DSP pattern. So again, we're gonna go ahead and glue that inside our card. So add a little bit of liquid glue here. And I always like to make sure that my flowers are pointing upwards. This is a directionally specific embossing folder. So you do want to pay attention to what direction your flowers are going. Just a hot tip because, well, I may or may not have made a couple cards with upside down flowers. All right, so there we go. There is our base. Now I'm going to give you a couple of tips for cutting our little flap here. So this is using my third, no, nope, fourth largest die. So this um, piece started out as a nine and a half by three inch piece of cardstock. It's Misty Moonlight. So nine and a half by three, okay? And then I scored it in the middle at uh, four and three quarters, all right? So I folded it in half. Then when I went to run it through my machine, this is important or you're gonna cut off your fold. You wanna make sure, I'm just gonna see, can you see the little gap between the top where that fold is and the top of my die? See how there's just an ever so little bit of a gap there? You wanna make sure there's that gap because the cutting blade on this is on the inside edge. It's like right here. And if you line up that, in, that edge with the top of your fold, you're gonna cut, you're gonna end up with two tags instead of a card. Okay, so um, ask me how I know, because that's exactly what I did the first time I tried this. So you just wanna make sure that you are leaving just a little bit of a gap to be able to make um, this little opening card, okay? Now, you could do really cool things and actually make your card base with the largest die, right? If you cut your card stock and then did the same thing. Ooh, now I'm thinking, now I have to make one. Um, you can do that the same thing. Okay, all right, I just dropped my die on the floor. Gotta make sure I don't roll my chair over it. All right, so that, now we are going to add our cardstock. So we have two pieces of white cardstock. Um, 
one is going to be for the front and one is for the inside. Before we glue anything, we are going to stamp. So I have all sorts of stamps from the Lasting Joy stamp set. Um, I'm just going to pull them all in here and then I'll show you which ones we're using. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're using this large flower. We're using this little guy actually in the center of this large flower. We're using, uh, nope, not this one, these little guys and this flower and then this sort of vine. Okay, so lots of itty bitty stamps in this um, set. Really fun to build your bouquet. So we're going to start with some misty moonlight. I'm gonna start by stamping my large flower. We're gonna stamp both the front and the inside at the same time, just because we're gonna have the stamps out, so we may as well do it that way. So starting with misty moonlight, uh, I'm gonna bring in my large flower. So my one on the left here is going to be, is this misty moonlight? Yeah, it is is going to be for the front. So there's that one. And then we're gonna stamp on the upper right. Okay, and then for the inside, we're just going to stamp once in the bottom right. Okay, so there's our flower. Then we're going to come in with some boho blue and these little leaves. So these are actually designed so that you can add blossoms in amongst the leaves. So I'm gonna stamp a few of them. We're gonna have some kind of coming up this way and then some kind of, kind of coming up this way. Now I didn't get actually a stem there, so we're gonna go ahead and add some more here and maybe a couple down here. And then I like to just flip it and stamp some more. So let's do this one. Let's do this like this. Oh, I like that one. And then we'll add these guys and maybe a little guy there. All right, so that's for the front. And then for the inside, same idea. We're gonna add a few of these little guys here and there, okay? All right, now we're gonna add our little pop of yellow. So I'm gonna bring in my lemon lolly. And we are going to, first of all, fill in the center of the large flowers with this little blossom here. So I'm going to stamp a yellow center inside each of those. Okay, and then again over here. There we go. And then I've got this other itty bitty flower, a little bit more detailed. And I'm going to start adding my little blossoms in amongst my leaves and stems here that I stamped earlier. So what I love is that you can kind of just be really artistic about it. You don't have to necessarily have your flowers touching your stems. It's just sort of a whimsical, artsy kind of approach. This is a very juicy lemon lolly pad. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna add a couple here. I hope the yellow shows up on the video. It is such a, a soft yellow. Um, sometimes when you're stamping it gets white, it doesn't show up all that well on the camera. And I am going to add an extra one here and an extra one here just to balance that out a bit. Oh, and I might need to do another one here. Why not? There we go. So there is our, or there are our, our yellow flowers. Now I'm going to come in again with my Misty Moonlight. Actually, I lied, my Night of Navy. And I'm going to add some leaves. So this is the vine. I'm going to ink it and stamp off. And then we're going to add just a few subtle little leaves here. So the trick when you're stamping off is to make sure you get a good first generation image. If you are someone who stamps off like this and then tries to stamp, you're gonna get that sort of uneven uh, color. Do you see how this is uneven? So therefore that's uneven. So when you're stamping off, you wanna make sure you stamp firmly and then you'll get a nice even second generation image. Okay, that's my little hot tip for stamping off. All right, next we are gonna stamp our sentiment. So on our piece for the front, we are going to stamp, may the years ahead be filled with, with lasting joy. We're gonna use our misty moonlight. And, oh, hi Peggy, I am glad to be back. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and stamp this just across the middle like that and because we're using that darker shade it pops against the florals in the background and now it's just a matter of gluing them onto our little mini card here so this one's going to go on the front 
So a little bit of glue. Oh, I almost, almost forgot my ribbon. That was a close one. Before we add our glue, we're going to add our ribbon. So I'm gonna take, this is just a little scrap of this beautiful lemon lolly ribbon. So this is gonna come across just underneath my stamp sentiment. Oops, where are my ribbon scissors here? So that's gonna come straight across and we'll adhere it with the glue dots. There we go. Now we can add our glue and adhere this to our tag. Yeah. There we are. So we're just gonna let's make sure that's right side up because that would be a disaster. <laughs> Do you notice how when I make a mistake, it's always one that I have a fix for because I probably made it before? Yeah. I make lots of mistakes. All right, so there's that. And then we're also going to add this one on the inside. So again, a little bit of glue. So this is where you would write your greening. Uh, not a ton of space to write, but I thought this would make a really pretty wedding card. Um, it's got a great sentiment for a wedding. So again, we're gonna layer that in here. If you wanted more space to write, you could certainly add another white tag um, on the other half here. Like you could add a white tag here and have more space to write if you needed it, okay? And then this is going to get glued centered on our background panel here. I am gonna use some seal this time. And we're just gonna center this. I'm gonna open this up, center it nicely on my background panel here. That looks straight-ish. And then we close it up, okay? And then we're gonna add a cute little lemon lolly bow. So here is some more of that beautiful ribbon. Now this ribbon comes in a three pack. Um, there is Bubble Bath, Lemon Lolly, and Azure Afternoon. It is the most gorgeous three-pack of ribbon I think we've ever carried because the colors are all beautiful. Um, it's nice, soft, sheer ribbon. Um, not not see-through sheer, but it's very um, easy to work with. Makes pulls a, a nice tight knot for your bow. And it has just this little thread of silver running through along the edges. It just makes it so, so pretty and elegant. So we're gonna go ahead and add a glue dot to the back of our bow here. And that is going to pop on just there. Okay, now the last touch is some little lemon lolly embellishments. This is from the Adhesive Backed Solid Gems from the new catalog. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few of these little beauties here. Oh, come on, work with me. And then one itty bitty one. What I love about these embellishments is there are three sizes and you get like two sets. So you get two large, two medium, two small, two large, two medium, two small, two small. So you get tons and I love that you get um, one of each size when you're using them in, in a set of three. So there we go. Easy peasy fun folds, but again, really pretty. And I love the pop of yellow with the beautiful blues in this DSP. All right, moving on to our last one. Now, this one I absolutely love. It looks really complicated, but it's really, really nuts, okay? So this one looks quite simple. It just looks like it's layered. Um, however, this actually pops out. So when you open it, let me see if I can... I'll stand it up and then you can kind of see. It's hard to see the front side. So if I do this, um, it sits like this. Okay, so you open it out. This panel pops out and then this panel pops out and you get this really cool sort of 3D effect. Um, so it's called a 2468 uh, fun fold with good reason. The scoring is really easy to remember. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to put this together. It is not hard, but it really is a wowza. So let's get to it. Get all my bits and pieces out here. It looks like a lot, but it's not, not complicated. All right, so I'm starting with a piece of DSP. So this is almost a half sheet of this beautiful DSP. And what I love about this is that it, again, showcases both sides of the paper, right? Um, so you can see both beautiful patterns. So this is cut to five and a quarter by 12, all right? And then, I wasn't lying, the scoring goes to four, six, and eight. <laughs> like it's that easy. Oh, my lamp is in the, in the view again. So two, four, six, and eight. 
All right, so we're gonna start with our first two inch fold and I'm gonna fold this to make a mountain. So I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and straight. My edges are flush. Okay, so that's my first fold. The next one is going to be a valley. Now, you wanna make sure when you fold this, you wanna make sure that this edge meets that score line. So let me see if I can do it this way. So I wanna make sure that these line up, okay? Sometimes when we're measuring, we may not be super accurate. We just wanna make sure that that two and four inch, when we fold them, they line up and you get a nice clean finish here, okay? Same thing with the six inch score. We're gonna make a mountain again. We're gonna fold this back. And once again, we just wanna make sure that those are going to line up nice and even. Okay, so we have mountain, valley, mountain. And then you can probably guess our eight inch score line is going to be another valley. So again, we're going to fold this over and take care to make sure that those edges line up nice and cleanly. Okay, so there we go. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Stamp it up. <laughs> okay, so that's all there is. It's such a simple concept. Um, it's not hard at all, um, but let me show you how we're going to decorate it. So we're actually going to work from back to front. All right, so I'm going to open up my sample. We're going to start with our back panel. Um, so this is the largest label die. Um, I've die cut from the same DSP. We are going to center that on our large background panel like that. Okay, so just a little bit of glue. And we're gonna center this on here. Okay, now this has a bit of a stripe, so it makes it easy to get it straight. Gotta love when the DSP helps. Oh, you could absolutely make a beautiful card, Jean. That would be lovely, absolutely lovely. All right, so there is that. Now we're gonna, we're gonna add this one last, and you'll see why in a few minutes, okay? So now I'm gonna fold in this next section. So I folded along my um, eight inch and my six inch so that I kind of covered up half of my label here. And then I'm going to come in with this embossed white frame. So this is that same, remember on this little card, I said I stamped and he embossed the entire image from the stamp and then die cut all of the labels. Well, this is another one of those labels that came out of it. So we are going to glue this. I'll just explain in it before I do it. So I'm going to glue this so that this frame lines up perfectly with the frame that's on, that's in the DSP in the background. Okay. Now to do that, we have to make sure we're only putting glue on this part, right? If we glue here, we're going to have a problem. So here's my tip. You're going to flip this over. You're going to line it up just the way you're going to want it. And then we're going to apply our glue to where we want it. So we're going to apply our glue here and then here and then up to here. Okay. We don't want any more than that. So then I'm going to flip it again and I'm going to carefully line up my frame with that DSP again so that it perfectly matches and stick my label into place. I was a little heavy handed with the glue there, so we'll get rid of some of that excess. I'm gonna have sticky fingers, okay? So that when the card is closed, it looks like that frame is intended to frame the DSP. Does that make sense? All right, next we have a white label that has been embossed with that same beautiful Countryside Blossoms embossing folder. Now this time I'm actually going to use the deboss side up. And what's beautiful about this is it's pretty from both sides, right? It doesn't really matter which side you're looking at. It looks lovely on both sides. So just like we did with the frame, we're going to flip this over, center it where we want it. We're going to add our glue only to the part that we want glue on, making sure not to add it where it's going to be extending off the edge. Flip it back over and center it inside our frame. And once again, the DSP is our friend because it has that stripe pattern and helps us to get it straight. Okay, so there, that's our next layer. Can you see that? All right, now we need to do a little bit of stamping. 
So I have another white label that is the same size as the one I just embossed. That's going to be for the inside. And then I have a smaller white label that is going to be for the front. Okay. So I'm going to do some more stamping. We're going to start with our large flower again, but this time we're going to stamp it in boho blue. So I'm just going to stamp this off, get rid of as much of the misty moonlight as I can. And we're going to add the large uh, flower in boho blue a couple of times on the front. Okay, and then we're also going to stamp it once on the, the larger one here, on the larger tag or label for the inside. Okay, all right, we're not going to get rid of this. I'm just going to close it and set it aside for a sec. And then we're going to come in with some Misty Moonlight. And we're going to fill in the centers of our large flowers again. I'm going to try and get rid of as much of the lemon lolly that was on there as I can. So we're going to fill in the centers of these large flowers. And then again on the inside, Let's see if I can get that centered a bit better. Okay. And then we're going to come in with Navy. So the Knight of Navy, and we are going to add some of the vines and we're also going to add, where'd that one go? This little image. So let me pull in the stamp set because it's hard to see this little guy. Okay, so it's basically three leaves with a gap in the middle, and that's going to allow us to nestle our blossom in between the leaves. So I'm going to add a few little leaves here and there. And we'll add one up here, and maybe we'll do one over here. And then same thing on the inside. We'll just add a couple of these little leaves so we can add our flower. Okay. Now, before we stamp our little vine, we are going to stamp those little flowers because we need to know where we have space to add our vine. So this is that same little flower that we use with the lemon lolly, but this time we're going to use it with boho blue. And we're just going to nestle them in amongst those little navy leaves that we stamped. Isn't that sweet? I absolutely love the way this stamp set works. Um, you can make such adorable little patterns with this gorgeous, these gorgeous images. All right, and then we're gonna come in with our Knight of Navy and we're gonna add this little vine image. This time we're gonna stamp it full strength. Last time we did it stamped off. So again, we're not gonna do a ton. We don't wanna be super heavy handed uh, because we don't wanna take away from the florals. That should be enough for the front. And then we'll add a couple for the inside. And there we go. All right. Now the last touch is going to be to shade a little bit with our blending brush. I've got my small blending brush and we're going to bring in the boho blue and that's just going to soften down the whole look and really have the flowers kind of blend into the background. So I'm not using a ton of ink. I'm just going to really add some subtle color around the edges where I've stamped flowers. I'm going to leave the middle lighter so that my sentiment kind of pops a little bit more. So we'll just come around here. There we go. Really, really subtle. And then same thing just along the bottom of this larger label, just where we've stamped just to help those blend a little bit. Okay, super simple. Last step is to add our sentiment. So I'm gonna come back with my navy ink and we are going to stamp always on our small label. So we're gonna stamp that hopefully straight, just like that. Okay, and then on the inside, we're going to stamp thinking of you. Again, hopefully straight, easier said than done when you're not looking straight down. Oh, it's not bad. I can live with that. And then we have another one of those itty bitty banners. We're going to stamp in my heart to go with the always for the front. So again, I'm going to pull this way down because the only way I can possibly get this centered is to look straight down on it. 
So there we go. And that's just a matter of sticking things in place. Now, um, we're going to add this one last. So I'm going to set that one aside. I need to talk to you for a second about how we're going to attach our ribbon. Okay. So I'm going to bring back the one we're working on and I have this beautiful Knight of Navy ribbon. So we are going to, because this side is going to be visible, I don't want to have like do my usual like ribbon trick where I don't have anything on the back. Um, so we are going to actually wrap the ribbon all the way around. So what I do or what I did is glue dot here. Why don't I just do it? I can explain it as I'm doing it. So glue dot, we're going to stick our ribbon and it's going to be centered on that two inch panel. Okay. So it's centered on here. I'm going to bring it around and as I bring it around, I'm actually going to add a little bit of seal, just a little to help tack it into place. So we're going to bring that around there because we want it to stay put, right? It is going to get handled and manipulated. So we want to make sure that it's not going to kind of shift and look wonky. And then I'm going to trim it just so that these pieces almost meet. Okay. That gap is going to get hidden by our bow and no one will ever know that we didn't actually wrap and tie because it is very difficult to get a nice pretty little bow when you are trying to wrap around especially DSP because DSP can be a little bit ornery to work with so we're just going to center this this is not quite straight so let's see if we can get this a little bit straighter so that our ribbon is straight with our DSP there we go that's better this one is not quite where I want it. Slide that over a bit. Okay, so there is our ribbon. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and glue our label on. So this is going to get centered as though it were centered on this white label. So same deal, we're going to flip it over. Okay, apply glue only where we want it to go. This time I'm going to use some seal. Again, just because we're this is the front and it's going to get a fair bit of abuse. Okay, so I'm going to add my seal where I want this to go, flip it back around, and then we're going to center it on that white label, up a little bit, right about there, and straight would be good. There we go. Okay, then we're going to add our bow. Actually, no, let's add our in my heart first. So this is such a narrow, itty bitty little banner. You're actually going to need to cut your mini dimensionals in half for it to work. Um, they are, it is very narrow. It won't fit even a half. Uh, oh, did I put that on the wrong end? No, I, or yes, I did put it on the wrong end. It's gotta go on the always end. So we're just gonna take a couple of these and pop them on like that, because this little end is going to hang off the edge, right? So we don't want a dimensional there. So we'll get rid of our backings and pop this on right about there. Okay, now we can tie our bow. So we'll take and tie a sweet little bow. I love this ribbon. This is from the mini. Uh, it carried over into this catalog and I was so happy that it did because I absolutely love, it's got a little bit of a linen look, which works really well with that sort of country vibe. Um, and yet it still ties nice and tight and flat and makes a pretty little bow. So we'll get rid of our tails and then we're going to grab another glue dot and we're going to pop this on and right where that, those two ends meet, we're going to stick our bow. Okay, and that's going to hide the gap and no one will know that there's even a gap there. Okay, all right, now the last step, well, not last, but next step, before we even glue this piece on, we're going to glue this onto our background. So this is just a quarter sheet of cardstock, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. It's boho blue. So we're going to center this onto our background. That's just going to give it a little bit more strength um, so that it doesn't flop when it's stood up it gives us a little bit more a little bit more oomph so we'll just center this on here and I'm using the liquid glue again just so that I can get this nice and straight and centered okay and then the last step is to glue this label on so what we want so let me just show you on my sample we want this stamped label 
to be hidden when the car is, card is closed. You see how you can't see that label at all? So when we open it, it's kind of like, oh, there's another label there. Okay, so here's how we're going to do that. We're going to open this up. We are going to layer. So I'm going to flip this. This is going to go like this, right? So I'm going to turn it over this way. And I'm going to line it up perfectly with that embossed white label. Then I'm going to go ahead and apply my glue. Okay, I'm going to readjust because that shifted just ever so slightly. And then I'm going to close my card. And when I open it, voila. Isn't that a neat way to line that up? Okay, so don't try and fuss, you know, and go by trial and error. So again, we open this up, we line up our label, put our glue, and then close the card. And there you go. All right, so our last touch is some more of these pretty little gems. Uh, this time in boho blue. So we'll go one and two. And these itty bitty ones, we'll put this guy up here. There we go. And there's your finished card. Do you like that one? All right, so don't go away because I got more to share with you. All right, so there is what that fun folds. Here is, was our second one. And here is our cute little bunny book fold, our little Peter Rabbit book. All right, now let me show you. I already showed you the inspiration for this one. This was a swap card I received. So that's just another take on this. Um, a little bit easier because it doesn't involve any die cutting. Okay. And then here is another one that I did using the same images and DSP. Uh, covered the entire card front with DSP on this one. This is the one, one of the ones that we made in my live launch party. Super simple. Again, DSP and stamping, a little bit of ribbon. And then here is another swap card I received. This is just a simple Z fold. Okay, again, super simple. And then I also love that this DSP works so, with so many other products. So here is um, the DSP, and there's another one of those navy embossed labels. Um, and this is used with, I can't think of the name of the sentiment set right now. It's another one from the new catalog um, that has the dies that cut out, to the, that make the sentiments look fussy cut. So there's that one. And here's another one. Still more of those navy embossed labels. This one works beautifully with the Circle Saying stamp set that I featured the week before I left for my trip. Here's another one, and this is the one that I actually embossed the DSP. Now, it probably doesn't show. If we had, you know, interactive video here, I could show you. You could touch this. Uh, but this is the DSP embossed with the embossing folder. And that's it because the other one's a duplicate. So there you go. Lots of possibilities with this fabulous suite, whether you are just looking at the DSP, which is going on sale June 1st, um, to use with other products, or you are actually investing in the whole suite so that you can use coordinating products. It is a beautiful, beautiful suite. And I can't say enough about these label dies. If nothing, if you, you could only get one thing from the suite, I would say get the dies because they are super versatile. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, it is good to be back. I have missed you all. And I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.